and it's sending power to our heating element. Now to check to see if the heating element is actually working. If you are a subscriber to my channel, thank you and welcome back. If you're not, please consider subscribing. It's free. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you don't miss upcoming videos. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to check to see if your heating elements for your electric water heater and your thermostats are working correctly. Now with the electric water heater, in this case, you have two access panels, the bottom one and the top one. The bottom one has its own thermostat and the heating element. So does the top one. In addition to having its own heating element and a thermostat, the top one also has a thermal shutoff. And as you've seen in my previous videos, the top controller takes priority over the bottom one. I guess let me back up. One element runs at a time. Both elements are not running at the same time. This is a 240 water heater, so each element draws about 18, 18 and a half amps. So think about it, your circuit breaker for this water heater most likely is a 30 amp. So you can only afford to run one at a time. And top takes priority because that's where the hot water comes out of, right there on that pipe right there. Comes out of that pipe right there from the top. Bottom takes the back seat to the top because your cold water, as it comes down from the cold side, there's a pipe inside of this water heater that runs all the way down and feeds water to the bottom of the water heater. So we wanna make sure that the water that we're consuming on the hot side is hot, or I should say it's to desired temperature, then the top element takes priority. So the next thing we do here is to check to see if those elements are working correctly and the thermostats are working correctly is to make sure that we have water to the water heater and it's full before we power it up. In this case, it is unplugged, right? You see, it is unplugged. So how do we make sure that there is enough water inside of this water heater? Uh, well, it stops making a noise once it's full. The second way you can tell that it's full of water is you can go to one of your faucets and turn on the hot side and if the hot water is flowing then you have water in the water heater now what happens if you don't have enough water meaning that if the elements are not submerged in water they'll burn up quickly so those elements are designed when they come on they're designed to be submerged in water otherwise they'll burn up okay so now, next thing we do is we'll take those covers off with the power off. All right, so here we're taking the top cover off. Then we have insulation, insulation. Again, keep in mind the power's off. And then we have this cover. There is our uh, thermal reset right there. There is the uh, controller thermostat for our top element. There's our top element right there. There is our temperature setting right there. Again, keeping in mind the water heater, there is no power to it right now. So this leg right here and this leg right here, between these two, we should get 240. But that just only shows that the controller, meaning your thermostat, it's doing its job and it's working and we have power coming in. How do you check under load? That's the best way to check. How do you check under load to make sure that this heating element is working? Well, you need to have a meter like this with a amp clamp. So we use it to see if there is any current flowing through this wire right here. One of the wires, doesn't matter which one. So 
where you measure one wire at a time or just one wire by itself that will tell you if there's current flowing and there's voltage to it, that healing element, that heating element is good, right? So let's let's do that. So before we do any of that, we're gonna put on our insulated gloves. We have our insulated gloves on right here. And we're gonna plug the water heater in. We're gonna power it up. Okay, now we adjust our temperature controller right here, this little screw here. It's actually, we don't need to do that. The water in there is cold enough. You can hear it running. So one way we can check real quick, top element takes priority. So here is 240. All right. So that only shows that if we didn't hear the sound, that only shows that the thermostat is working and our power to the water heater is live and it's sending power to our heating element. Now to check to see if the heating element is actually working, in this case we can hear it, but to check it, if you didn't hear it, is taking one of the two wires Take your clamp from your amp meter and let's see if you can get the video lower. So there it is. You can see that the top line right here is reading the current. The current that's flowing through that wire is 18.62 amps, right? So that tells me that that the heating element is drawing current therefore it's good so that's working all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to test the bottom element how do you force the water heater to stop working the top element and send voltage to the bottom this is how you do it let's get a close up you reduce the desired temperature setting. So this is our desired temperature setting right there. I want to reduce it. There it is. I just heard it click. Water heater stopped. Now, if the temperature at the bottom of this water heater, the temperature of the water is too low, which it is, you can hear it now. That's the, that's the bottom element actually running. So we forced our controller to shut power off to the top element. Here, we're gonna check it again. Here's the voltage on it, right here. There is shut power off to the top element, right here. This was just a hold, 18.62 is a hold for the current, but you can just, let's see if you release the hold. I want the light on, hang on, fellas. There you go, okay. So there's no voltage here, but this is your main line one, line two coming in. So there's your 240 right there. We're still on hold, sorry guys. Uh, it's hard to get the light and the hold, sorry about that. There we go, now we're off hold. So that's the voltage coming into the water heater. These two terminals up here, L1 and L2, you'll see it's 242. Then at the top element, we're not getting any voltage, which that's the way it should be because the temperature setting is so low that that uh, temperature of the water in there is hot enough that shut the top thermostat off. Now we're gonna go down to the bottom thermostat and check it while it's running. 
I'm going to take this out right there. So you'll see this controller down here is smaller. That's all, it's, it's just a thermostat. That's all it is, right? So the power is being fed from the top. Since the top element is satisfied, power is fed down here. Now we should get our voltage. I don't know if you can see the screen, just went off again. It's hard to manipulate this, sorry about that, with the glove. There we go. Now one more beep, that will do it right there. And we can get that. And we're getting, we should get 240 here on this element now. Again, this is because the temperature down here is low enough, the temperature of water is low enough that it's um, turning on the thermostat. Thermostat is powering up our heating element down here. Okay, and then just like we did before, we can measure the current on this line here, right there. That will tell us, we can hear it right now, but in some cases you're not, you're not gonna be able to hear um, your water heater running. In this case, we can hear it, but I can, again, double check it right there. Take my clamp, wrap it around one of the lines, make sure the clamp closes. There it is right there. Oh, right there. So this one's drawing 19 amps. Oops, sorry about that. You can't see it. Now you can, there you go, 19 amps. All right, so that's the top part of the screen right there. Show 19.1 amp, okay? Now, if you wanna shut this one off, you can do the same thing again. You can take and, let's see if I turn it counterclockwise right there. all the way to the lowest setting, okay? So once the temperature of the water inside gets to that desired temperature setting, it will stop. Second way you can stop it, meaning second way you can stop the uh, power going to our bottom element is to go to the top. Remember, top takes priority. If I go to the top, increase my desired temperature setting. There, you heard it. Now it's asking for heat. So the, since it takes priority, now the top element is gonna run. So if we bring our meter back up here again, If we bring our meter back up here again, you can check right there on our heating element, we're at 242. So again, top takes priority. I just, all I had to do to start the um, process of heating on the top by just increasing my desired temperature setting. It took power away from the bottom right there. That's the bottom one right there. Right there. It took power away from the bottom. And again, I can do the same thing. So you can control which one of these is running. So you don't have to wait. And you can test each one since you can control which one you want to run. So again, I want to run the bottom one. So I'm gonna decrease my desired temperature setting up here. There, you can hear it, you heard it click. So temperature setting is now to a point where the water inside on the top part is hot enough that the power has been sent to the bottom, right? So we're gonna have power coming here, but let's see it, if it actually sends it to our heating element or not. It's not. See, it's not sending it to our heating element. So this is the other condition, the third condition where both heating elements are off. 
Because remember, we set the desired temperature setting down here, low enough, so it's shut off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back up here a little bit. So I can hear it click again. Listen, there it is, there it went. So now the bottom should run now. Right there. And there's a 242 right there. Okay, there you have it. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification.